Welcome to this video. This is a new video in this series covering my games from the open tournament I recently played on the island of Mallorca. Let's um, look at this game. If you have seen the first three videos, you'll know that I had an excellent um, start in this tournament with three wins in a row. So three out of three possible points beating a grandmaster in the third round. Yeah, it was a bit of a lucky win, this third round win against um, Kvainis from Lithuania. But still, a win is a win. So I was pretty much assured to get a strong opponent in round four. And uh, I got one, <laughs> yet another grandmaster. This was um, a game with White against uh, Yuri Solodovnichenko. Solodovnichenko, very long name. He's rated 2,574, close to the 2,600 mark. He also was above that mark um, for a while, but he's uh, usually he's hovering between 2,550 and 2,620, somewhere around this. Um, yeah, of course I did some preparation for the game, but it turned out to be not so easy. He's, he's playing more than one opening, not a very predictable player. So um, I just decided to uh, to play uh, d4 and see what happens. Yeah, we got this um, setup, the so-called triangle setup. <clears throat> this is something that he had played before, but uh, I, I mentioned, as mentioned, I couldn't be sure that I get exactly this opening. Yeah, I decided to play queen c2. Um, that's my usual move here covering the c4 pawn and keep some flexibility for um, for the other pieces. What I'd like to do is, he played knight f6, to play bishop g5 and then e3, getting the bishop out of the pawn chain and um, get an harmonious <clears throat> setup. That's not so easy, in fact, if you look at this position, if you want to do that, you have problems with the c4 pawn if you don't play queen c2. After this, for example, black can play this um, this opening, the so-called notable variation. Leads to very sharp play with black very often just keeping the pawn. So um, if you want to keep the c4 pawn and get your bishop out, you pretty much have to play queen c2. Yeah, my, um, my line is mentioned. I have some experience with that. However, he managed to play um, a, a sub-variation that I absolutely did not know h6, bishop h4. Yeah, and here the most uh, common move by far is the capture on c4, after which white just recaptures. And um, yeah, we, we go from there. White um, normally tries to develop with e3, knight d2 or knight c3. Very often the queen gets a kick with b5. <clears throat> this is um, a line that I have played a number of times. But he <clears throat> sorry, played something entirely different. He played check. queen a5 check. And I, <clears throat> I knew the general idea, of course. For example, um, there, is, um, there is this. Check. But here he played this queen a5 check. move um, immediately. And this irritated me a bit. I um, absolutely... Um, had not looked at this in, in, in any preparation. So I needed to, yeah, to, to play a real game here, <laughs> not relying on on anything I studied beforehand. Yeah, I wasn't sure what to do against the check. I mean, pretty much knight d2, knight c3, and knight fd2 is possible. And they all make some sense. However, a move like knight fd2 seemed a bit passive to me. The problem is, or the general problem is, sometimes black here gets very strong and quick counterplay with knight e4, bishop b4, and utilizing the spin. Note that there is always g5, g4 also to to um, to kick the f3 knight. So if um, black is doing, if white is doing some stupid moves, he can easily get into trouble. I can just put something on the board that is um, somewhat uh, cooperative. Yeah, let's say something like this, and now g4. Yeah, knight moves, knight d2, and white resigns as queen d2, bishop b4, loses the queen. These kind of tricks are in the position, so 
need to be uh, quite alert here already. Yeah, well, after a while, I decided to play knight c3 and um, just giving up the pawn on c4. Um, usually, I don't like to do that, um, playing this in gambit style. But in this particular position, I thought it would be uh, worth it because if you look at this, he took really quickly. Um, I'm, I'm able to take on f6 and damage black's pawn structure. This is a big difference to some other lines where this pawn is sacrificed. Here black really has a um, somewhat wrecked pawn structure. Of course, he's got the two bishops, very important. Long term, this can be um, a big a big factor. Um, yeah, well, I um, had to work this out over the board. So, um, and I think my, my judgment here was, okay, I have enough compensation for the pawn. However, it's uh, debatable if the next move is right. I played g3, obviously preparing to fianchetto. Um, with hindsight, maybe e3 is, um, is to be preferred. It has a big advantage over g3, and this is that it directly attacks the pawn. And this means that black needs to react to that and probably <clears throat> needs to play b5. And here, I'm actually assured that he has to play b5. And in this um, way also <clears throat> weaken the whole queenside structure, especially the light squares. While in the game, after g3, it's not really necessary for him to play b5. And maybe, therefore, e3 is a bit... Um, yeah, is, is to be preferred. That's possible. I mean, my position was perfectly okay in the game. Just afterwards, I thought, well, maybe e3 uh, would have been better after all. He played knight d7, bishop g2, and bishop g7. Yeah, at the moment, it looks strange, uh, the bishop on g7, but after short castles, and this is what we did now, castles and castles, this bishop is an important defender of the king, and after a later f5, this bishop on g7 is a very strong piece. So this makes uh, lots of sense. Yeah, in this position here is one of those cases where you would uh, like to have more time on your hands. Um, as I mentioned in earlier videos, we played a very quick time control, 90 minutes per game and 30 seconds um, increment per move. So if you just take two or three longer things of 10 minutes or something, you're already very much down on, on, the, on the clock. Um, yeah, here the problem is, what I'd like to do is, I'd like to, of course, ideally, I get the pawn back with an active position. Um, and this whole thing is um, centered around a couple of uh, moves that I should play in some order. Knight d2, a4, and e3. Those moves are my next moves. The question is, in what order? Yeah, this is not uh, not so easy to um, to say, because well, I want to to have the pawn back or to provoke him to 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 weaken the queen side further. Maybe in this position, knight d2 was the was in, was was more interesting. I played a4 and rather quickly because. I looked at this for two minutes, around two minutes, and thought, well, you're not going to work out now what is the best move order, so just play one of the moves. Yeah, a4 makes it more difficult for him to play um, to play b5, and um, it also very often can happen that a4, a5 wins an important tempo on a knight that might appear on b6. a4 has some points. There also was knight d2, and maybe this is um, even more interesting. If we look at this, um, what should black play? Let's say he starts with f5. Yeah, attacking here, e3, knight b6. This this kind of uh, setup. Um, here there are some interesting possibilities for white. One interesting move, um, for example, is to play a3, intending to play b4 attacking the queen or even the direct b3 is a move yeah something like that would be a, a very nice compensation with the bishop and the knights having pressure here on the queen side on b3 however he has e5 so 
it's uh, it's not easy at all. But this would have been interesting, just uh, not playing a4 immediately and try to use a different move order. This was not bad, yeah, but um, the alternatives were very much um, worth considering. Yeah, he went f5, as I expected, you need to activate this bishop. And now e3, I don't think I can play without the move, I want to make this um, knight flexible, that it can actually move and maybe pick up the pawn, and the bishop was always attacking d4, so that's very logical. He played c5. Yeah, this is also what I expected. Yeah, I'm trying to attack the d4 pawn. Yeah, and here it gets um, it gets very interesting. Um, it seems that here I had an interesting alternative that I did not really appreciate. I played knight b5, which is okay, but um, there also was the move d5. That I didn't really consider, but it is very interesting. The move has one um, particular virtue. It attacks the light squares like this, and this can maybe even um, intensify it, maybe knight h4. It sort of, um, yeah, tries to claim that this queen is a bit offside. I didn't really consider this um, this in much detail. I just thought, okay, he's going to play this. And um, I didn't really look further. I mean, it, it did not l seem right to me to play d5 and then take. But the truth is, if you look at this, takes, yeah, bishop takes is is totally, is really, really um, not good. So pawn takes. And now I have a good move, e4. And this I didn't see at all. Here white has um, very substantial compensation. Note that the queen is really offside. And uh, the whole position in the center will be will be uh, will be opened up. This would have been very interesting. Maybe Black needs to do something else after d5, like um, just <clears throat> I don't know, play play a little strengthening move. Knight b6 has the disadvantage, of course, that the queen cannot go back. It's uh, really cutting off the queen's retreat. d5 was very interesting. Yeah, I played knight b5. The idea was to uh, also just get the pawn back. Yeah, and um, now he took on d4. This I also expected. Um, and e takes d4. Yeah, that's better than taking with a piece. The pawn here is isolated, okay, but it controls those important squares. If I take with um, with the knight, then uh, there is knight to e5, for example. He can now use the knight on a central square, which is not possible after the pawn recapture. So the pawn, um, the pawn recapture, I think, is just the better move. Knight b6, keeping the pawn for the moment. And um, yeah, okay, I only have one logical move, knight e5, trying to get it back. Yeah, and um, <clears throat> now it gets very concrete. Um, he now played the move a6. This I, I didn't really expect, to be honest. Um, I saw exactly what happened in the game and I thought that um, black shouldn't, uh, shouldn't allow that. It is playable though, the move a6. What I had actually expected was rook d8. Uh, this is not uh, not a bad move as well. It just um, yeah puts more pressure here. And um, my planned reply was queen c3. Looks a bit weird, but I think it's quite good as it strengthens white's uh, center. And white still has compensation here for the pawn with a4, a5, a6, these kind of ideas. It's very complicated um, position and uh, certainly an alternative for black. His um, approach is different. He just said, okay, I'll take all pawns that you offer me and uh, I'm going to defend this. A6 essentially wins, uh, wins a pawn, um, or if you, if you want, two pawns. Knight d6, of course, I'm not going to retreat here. Attacking c4, yeah, and now he just took on e5. Yeah, grabbing, grabbing the pawn. And um, yeah, if you do a, a quick count, black has two pawns up now. 
However, now I played I played rook d1, we can put this on the board. However, it is quite apparent <clears throat> that um, um, white has a very substantial compensation for the pawns. Yeah, I have a, um, a super diagonal here. The bishop is very strong. I have a good knight on d6. Black's position is somewhat loose. Knight on b6, for example, and the king. Um, yeah, during the during the game, um, I was only thinking, okay, am I better here or is it just a compensation? And um, yeah, it is. Um, in fact, it seems to be just compensation. I don't think that white has an advantage here. Um, yeah, we should look at the next moves. Black uh, now played a very good defensive move. Played a5. It's not a very attractive looking move but a4 a5 was such a strong threat you need to address that um, <clears throat> here we had a very interesting point i uh, captured on c4 after just um, a short think um i thought it was very difficult to judge if you should take on c4 immediately or if you should play some sort of preparation move the only preparation move that um, that really came to my mind is uh, is rook c uh, rook c1. Yeah, but uh, I didn't do that because um, I thought that maybe f4 would help, like getting rid of one of the pawns. And at the end, I will <clears throat> take here anyway. So I decided to to just uh, just take it immediately. I mean, it's really a matter in with this uh, quick time control to at some point just um, yeah trust your gut instinct and play the move that you think is right. If you see two very similar moves, just one needs to be played. Um, note that getting back the pawns or one pawn here is, is really not helping at all. Something like knight b7, for example, is a terrible move. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, this would have <clears throat> exchanged my excellent knight on d6 for, for this pawn and especially for the bishop on c8. The bishop on c8 is black's, um, <clears throat> black's problem chart here, but it's not doing anything. And I shouldn't um, yeah take this off for just a single pawn. The same applies for the capture here. Yeah, something like that. It's, um, it's this, this is the same position, right? Yeah, that's even the same position. So taking one of the pawns is, is really out of the question. I just took here and it's okay. I mean, I really cannot blame myself. The, the moves are okay. Take here <clears throat> and of course he took b2. That's the only sensible move. You need to grab the material here. And um, yeah, he's two pawns up. Yeah, Rook b1, logical, I guess. And the queen went back to um, f6 and queen c7 yeah also i think very obvious this move entering into black's camp yeah and black is <clears throat> very much uh, paralyzed he cannot um, he cannot do anything active here white's compensation is uh, is very apparent um but it's two pawns yeah two pawns is um quite something but still <clears throat> i had seen this position when i um when I initiated uh, the whole thing with uh, with knight um, takes c4, and I thought, okay, this should be enough, and it is enough, but um, it gets very very difficult to play. He now played the move king g7. This is just just a clever move. It covers <clears throat> covered the h6 pawn, gets um, off the back rank. And um, yeah, well, black did, couldn't do anything active anyway, so it um, this makes some sense. <clears throat> so what should white do now? Here we come to the point, or one point, where you um, <clears throat> can look for improvements. I think, of course, you can look for improvements uh, before, but I think here it is quite clear that um, white should have enough compensation. But how exactly do you play? That's not um, not so clear. Um, at the end, I decided to play rook to b5. My idea was, I mean, in general, it is a, a good active move. It prevents any e6, e5 stuff. And, well, I thought maybe just get one pawn back without any <clears throat> big problems and uh, keep the, the pressure on. 
Um, it's not clear that this was the best choice. There is also the move rook to b6, <clears throat> which I also considered. Which I also considered. Uh, that I also considered. But um, it was very hard to determine what move is better, really. Um, one point here of putting it on b6 is if you look at the following rook e8, that's a very um, viable defensive try. Black tries to get the queen back to e7 or rook to e7, trying to get this um, rook into play. After that, I have a good move, bishop f1. And this is an important point why the rook on b6 makes lots of sense. b5 is a square for the bishop. For example, after queen e7, queen c3 check. Check. It is not easy for black to avoid the repetition, yeah? this this kind of repetition. Check. A move like king h7 after rook b to d6 can be very, very tricky for black. I mean, what exactly are you playing next? For example, if black tries to, um, yeah, try to activate with e5, yeah, attending the bishop move, there is, amongst others, the idea bishop b5, let's say rook to g8, and then bishop to d7. That's probably not even the best move, but I just want to show the idea. It looks weird to exchange this uh, undeveloped bishop, but on the other hand, now the rooks can enter on the seventh rank, and all pawns here are under attack. This is a really strong compensation. And um, yeah, I mean, here I really prefer white, even <clears throat> with the computer only showing, <clears throat> sorry for my voice, <clears throat> showing 0, 0, 0. Um, this seems very, very uh, dangerous for black. Um, that's just one, one idea, but um, I, didn't, uh, I didn't really fully appreciate it. And as mentioned, at some point you just needed to, uh, to get, with, or get on with the moves that, um, that you thought were right. I played, I played rook b5, <clears throat> played rook e8, and I took the pawn. Uh, that's not a mistake, I'm just saying that rook b6 was maybe better at this. And now he came, uh, came uh, with e5. Yeah, and here um, it dawned on me that, uh, well, maybe there was something better. I mean, he, he, he got in e5. Still, look at this, queen c7, he still cannot move the pawn. Um, uh, sorry, the bishop without losing the pawn. One uh, problem though is that he gets in e4. Now well, this this I had seen, and I thought, okay, well I have bishop f1 with the possibility bishop to b5, similar to what we saw before. And well, those pawns here, I mean, they are obviously better there than on e6 here. Yeah? This has helped black because you can probably develop at some point, but still have a very good control over f4. And um, for example, all kinds of some end games here, even a pawn down would be easily drawn. A rook end game, for example, a bishop's end game, all those would uh, would draw relatively simply. Mixed end games like queen and bishop against queen and bishop are a different matter, but the pure bishop end game, for example, would be probably a pretty uh, pretty easy draw because of the double pawn. Um, so there are very substantial. Um, um, chances to uh, to have a full compensation here but it's not as good as uh, with rook b6 probably yeah here he played the move queen e5 maybe not the best move it's possible that queen e7 was uh, was better but it's uh, really impossible to um to play perfect chess with this uh, quick time control yeah rook c1 that's fairly logical. I want to keep the queen here, especially keep b7 under attack. Yeah, and here um, he played the most, um, yeah, the most interesting move, the most fighting move. He played queen to b2. Um, the queen trade um, also was possible, but here I think uh, I really should have, uh, should have enough to to keep this uh, keep this even, the bishop c4 counter idea against f7 should be uh, should be enough really. Yeah, queen b2 is the more interesting move anyway. Yeah, I went rook c2 attacking the queen. 
went to a1 yeah and here in exactly here exactly in in this position we uh, we have a very critical position in the game um and um in fact i think um what i'm playing next is my only my only substantial mistake really i mean i made i made a, a even bigger mistake at the end but there i was already in in very substantial trouble um, I played the move a5 here. It seemed seemed very logical to me. This was hanging. a5 keeps the pawn and it keeps the whole activity that uh, white has. Um, I had a better move though, and th the main uh, problem, or what is um, what annoys me the most, is that I didn't even consider the move, and uh, this is really um, really bad. Um, white has a strong move here, and this is uh, queen b8 is just strong. It attacks the bishop. I didn't consider the move at all, really. I only saw it afterwards uh, when the computer pointed it um, out to me. And this seems to be um, quite okay for white. The bishop is hanging. It needs to move, obviously. Yeah, to, to d7, maybe. Queen b7. And now I have I still maintain a very active position. This is... A position that uh, we should compare to to the game where we had the same structure we also had b and a pawn exchanged but i was far more passive than i am here um it's not so easy to uh, to thoroughly uh, analyze this but let's look at some samples if queen a4 for example he takes it with the queen there is rook d2 and here we see a very important point black really would like to put the bishop on e6 however this is not check. possible a check bishop b5 and black resigns probably um with um, this fork or is this a skewer yeah whatever it attacks two pieces and wins one of them um yeah so he cannot go there so he probably needs to play a move like this and now queen to queen to b6 yeah, and here white is just um, much more active than, than in the game. The whole coordination is a bit uh, disturbed on the black side because of this bishop on c6. It really would prefer very much to be on e6, but as we saw, it was not working due to, due to tactical reasons, due to concrete uh, variations. Yeah, uh, the queen b8 would have regained, um, yeah, or exchanged, let's say, the b and uh, a pawn. And white would uh, would have retained the activity. I played a5, and now we see that he can play bishop e6. And uh, what we now get is a much improved version, as he has the bishop on e6, which he didn't um, get in the other line. This was, of course, not, of course, not easy to um, uh, to see. But the problem was that I didn't really consider queen uh, queen b8 at all. I was just seeing, okay, a5 looks, oh, sorry. Um, I was just seeing that, okay, a5 looks normal, let's play that. And um, it turned out that I really should have uh, calculated much more thoroughly here and uh, then spot queen b8. Yeah, bishop e6, and I played, um, yeah, rook c1 first, attacking the queen. He uh, does not want to, want to draw. Check. Here I went to e5, yeah. I also um, could have tried to to continuously attack the queen, but he has uh, other squares he can to can can go here for example. Um, yeah, I I went oops check I went here and rook b two. It also um, makes lots of sense attacking attacking here. Now queen d five. We after some moves. Yeah, this is what I was getting at. We get the same structure that I could have gotten with Queen B8, but just in a in a much uh, much worse uh, version. As here, he has the move Queen E1, and um, this is what I didn't really uh, didn't really see how problematic this already is. In the moves before, I had alternatives, but they already are not so attractive anymore. Here, for example, I absolutely should have exchanged queens. But um, the problem was 
I didn't see how bad Rook C8 really is. I saw for me, I mean, Rook C8. Rook C8 is just strong. The idea is Queen D1 and Rook C1. His King on G6 is, is fairly safe, and um, I absolutely didn't see how problematic this is. Well, as mentioned, I went uh, Rook B6. Yeah, setting up here this pin, and then we we got this trade. And after Queen E1, I uh, I was down to I'm not quite sure three minutes or something four minutes for the rest of the game with this third, with this uh, thirty second increment. Yeah, and here I recognized how uh, how bad it is, and uh, I simply I simply couldn't find a move. I first discarded uh, Rook B8. I calculated rook c7, all kinds of moves. The problem is always bishop c4, and I'm killed here on the on the on the back rank. Yeah, and with the clock uh, going going down, at the end um, I thought, oh well, rook b8 is working, and uh, I overlooked something. I played rook b8 here, which um, yeah, well loses instantly. But it turns out that I don't have any uh, any defense here anymore. Um, what I saw actually is Queen e3. But uh, the problem is, I mean, this is not clear that it is winning. Uh, it's obviously much better for black, but it's not clear that it is winning. For example, after rook trade, this is a dead draw. Yeah, so only with rooks on black um, can succeed probably. Um, the problem is though he does not need to take. Yeah, he can play queen here and um, get this in. Also, if you look at this, for example, this is a terrible position. Simply, I have no move. If I go king g2, there's e3, and um, there's no defense whatsoever. Yeah. The, the, the position is already lost well so rook b8 it uh, was based on a miscalculation but um, it is already lost he just took it and played bishop c4 yeah of course i'd seen that queen's queen f1 is deadly but i had a simple a simple miss uh, misstep played queen b8 uh, queen g8 and by now i had recognized my problem i had um, initially i thought he must go here and uh, then I thought, okay, this Check. will be a will be a perpetual. In fact, yeah, I would even Check. be winning. But uh, yeah, the problem was simply I overlooked that he can go to h5. <laughs> yeah, it's just uh, as simple as that. The bishop now is is covering f7, and I don't even have a check. Uh, well, I can I can give this check. this spite check here g4, but I didn't bother. I just uh, resigned here in this position. I, I simply overlooked that he can go to h5. Yeah, so at the end, um, I didn't play this uh, position precisely enough. It started exactly here with this move a5. So here, I absolutely must play queen b8. I absolutely must do that. After that, I have enough activity probably to, uh, to compensate for the pawn. After this, he manages to get the bishop to e6, and I absolutely didn't appreciate how important that is, and that I can actually prevent it with queen b8. My problem was I didn't really use the, the, the candidate moves principle here. I just played a5 rather quickly. And um, yeah, now it is pretty clear that um, the position after queen b8 is just much better than this. Here it's um, it's very tricky already to um to keep this uh, to keep this going what uh, i probably still should have done here is to exchange queens this is not much fun really not but um this was the the toughest defense there, at least there are still some ideas how the game could end in a draw but it is um it is very uh, tough to do in a practical game for example, or one problem is that if I go a6, which I would like to do, I'd like to get rid of pawns. He's got this um, rook a8 and possibly going quickly to a1. 
Yeah, that's really uh, not much fun to defend. I'm pretty sure that I would have lost this in the long run. But um, objectively speaking, I probably must do it. Yeah, and here, here I'm already busted, I guess. Queen d1 and rook c1 is just too much. The weakness here of the the back rank is uh, is too much of a problem. <laughs> yeah, I'm still a bit um, <laughs> thinking about it. Did I really need to lose the game? Yeah, probably not. I mean, uh, I had really a very nice compensation, but queen b8 is the move that I needed to play. Or instead of getting the pawn back immediately here, or one pawn back, this move, um, rook b6, yeah, maybe this was was really uh, much stronger. Here, I also, I simply, well, this bishop is so strong on this diagonal, and I didn't really think about this type of maneuver. It's, um, it's very um, counterintuitive, but it is strong. Yeah, even getting it to b5 to d7, um, to d7 to invade on the seventh rank is very, very strong, but tough to find, really tough to find. Yeah, okay, I'm, I'm not sure I should be too critical of myself for the game. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't terribly bad, but um, yeah, after you have uh, you sacrificed two pawns and, and so on, and uh, it got some, some pressure going, you thought, okay, maybe it would have been a bit nice to, to get more than, <laughs> than a loss out of it. But on the other hand, you need to appreciate what he did there. He played absolutely precisely the whole time. He grabbed the two pawns and he just said, okay, show me, what, what do you have for the two pawns? And I didn't manage, really. I, I got one back and then uh, I made this inaccurate move, not playing queen b8. And after that, he just uh, very clinically won the game. So um, just a very good performance by the black player. It's not it's not really my kind of chess. I don't like to, to take those pawns and try to try to defend this precisely, but uh, it is um, it is a, a valid style of play, of course, as we have witnessed here. Okay, despite a loss, I hope you <laughs> enjoyed the game. I think it was fairly interesting, nevertheless. Okay, thanks for watching.